Three Hotel, 1045, the zone print, Doherty, Don Davenport, and Ron Slay broadcasting live in Vegas. Radio Row, getting, uh, getting uh, ready for the big game coming up this weekend. Our thanks to Pioneer Heating and Cooling, among other special mm-hmm. companies. You can check them out, 1045thezone.com. Going to visit with Ed Smith here, Believe in Cardinals podcast. And, uh, man, this guy's got a buried pass. I can't wait to get into some of this. Ed, what's up? How are you? Hey, great to be here with you guys. Look like you guys are having some fun. Well, yeah. I, I mean, how can you not, Always. right? It's Vegas. Yeah, Raider Row in Vegas. Yeah, that's, it, that's exactly right. So, uh, did I hear correctly? So, play for the Falcons. Yes, got sir. Got that Super Bowl thing. Two years with them, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we'll get into that. But you also went down the, ma- the, the baseball path. Right out of high school, started playing professional baseball, drafted by the White Sox in the 87 draft. And spent nine years playing minor league baseball Ooh. before I split uh, and made the the switch over to football in '96. Wow. wow. Okay. That's we'll a get, grind, huh? Well, yeah, it was a grind. And there have been some guys that have done this, but yeah, let's go back to that—the grind of minor league baseball. What was that like in the '90s, uh, going going through that? It was prehistoric, man. Yeah. It was like you know the movie Bull Durham. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, not word for word, but it was that was the closest to the minor league experience for me. Yeah. A lot of stories in that in my journey kind of go right along with that path you know eating at uh you know truck stops in the middle of the night Mm -hmm. 12 hour bus rides uh you know packing your own luggage and lawn doing your laundry on the road the whole nine you know the i you know i started all the way from a ball all the way up made it to triple a before i made the switch so i got to see every level man everything from the buses to you know playing the triple a flying around the country so a uh, unique experience. So it definitely. gets gradually better? Gradually better, yeah. yeah. Yeah, when you're in those minor league situations, though, this is like low A ball. Well, I tell you, man, the the, common, the the hotels got better every level we went to. When I was in the A ball, <laughs> we stayed in motels. Oh, know? yeah. And then we graduated to hotels. And they said it got nicer as we went up the ranks. But, I mean, it was, you know, it was everything you see and heard about, that was the lifestyle. Wow. <laughs> so I'm guessing you played high school football, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I did. Okay. I played one year of football when I was eight, didn't like it, <laughs> and I, my mom made me finish that season. But then I went and played soccer for four years oh. before I got to high school. Okay. And then when I got to high school, it wasn't cool to play soccer yeah, in high school. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. the high school football coaches had heard about me, yeah. basically drugged me out on the field as a freshman, and the rest was history. So so was that a decision that, that was a difficult one, like going to, to further that football career or – getting that phone call and knowing that you were drafted and, uh, heck i'm doing this everybody wanted me to go to football route yeah so you know okay. i was being pushed in that direction but my first love was baseball and i let it be known i took all my visits i did you know everything i had to do and i actually actually signed my letter of intent full letter uh full scholarship uh to the university of north carolina okay mm-hmm. so i was going lock stock and barrel there and i told them instead of sign playing football and doing baseball on the side I was going to play baseball and do football on the side. And never got to that point, though, because after I signed, you know, I thought everything was good. And then the White Sox came uh, knocking on the door, uh, you know, got signed in the seventh round. They kind of went around the rosy with me as far as money here and there. And then eventually talked me into going that route. So I never stepped on campus. But like that was my, uh, you know, I was actually originally supposed to be a Tar Heel. Ed hmm. Smith with an incredible story. So. Did you play in Nashville? Did you play at Greer I Stadium? Did. I did. I did. We oh were just talking. Gosh. I played. Let's see. I played in the Southern League, the yeah. American Association. But I had two stints in the Southern League: Knoxville, Chattanooga, Nashville. You know, all over. Bill Myers Stadium in, in yeah. Knoxville. I, oh, we man. were just talking about the the big guitar man. Oh yeah, I agree. One, one yeah. of my one of my White Sox teammates. By the time I got to, uh, I think it was my last season, he was in AAA with the White Sox. I was in AAA with the Indians. And we squared off. He's a good dude, too. And he, to this day, I mess with him because I tried to knock that dog on uh, uh, <laughs> guitar over, man. It's like target practice. Man, I hit one. And it was, I think it was Did like you? a 3-1 fastball. <laughs> he tried to sneak by me, man. I turned on that boy. I, I, I almost knocked that dog on the score run over. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Ed Smith trying to make history out there at uh, Greer State. So you, you weren't on the Barons with Jordan and all that mess. I was actually in the Southern League that year while I was with the Cubs. Okay. And I got to know Michael really well. Michael and I, he was a third baseman. Uh, we kind of just started chit-chatting the first time they came through. 
and throughout the rest of the season, man, we we were like damn their best friends. Oh we gosh. you know we we had a little competition too. I'm sure. He uh, at the beginning <laughs> of the year he told me he's gonna get one down the line on me, and I told Mike I said try as you might you never will. So all the way through the season where we were in Birmingham or when we were in uh, Orlando, my city, he kept trying, trying, trying. Last I swear to you, last game we were playing them of the season, he. I think it was a second at bat. He fakes a drag bunt. I go charging. He doesn't bunt it, but I stop, and I looked at him like, man, come on, you two talk too big to be doing that. So I backed off, started playing cat and mouse with him. He got a change up, man. Laced it down the line, oh, one no. hopper, and I went at the one-step dive. I hit the chalk. I looked up, and I saw the third base on point and fair. And as I got up dusting the chalk off, Mike was cruising in the second with the biggest grin on his face <laughs> that you could imagine. It, he's and the kind of guy, if you saw him right now, he'd probably remember he it would and tell remember you about it. it. He got the third base, and he would not let me stop having it. <laughs> he was I told, and I was just like, you know. <laughs> you got one. Just, he got me, man. Yeah. He got me. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Ed Smith with us, believe in Cardinals. Uh, I guess we'll get there. <laughs> Super Bowl this week. Yeah. Uh, what was that like, bro? Unbelievable. I mean, the biggest game for me, most successful one was the NFC Championship game okay. that we won against, uh, you know, Minnesota. They were 15-1. We were 14-2. and two, Still 11-point dog going up there. Nobody in the world thought we would had a chance in the game, let alone winning it. And, I mean, we went up there with a plan. And, you know, that's the stuff that, you know, movies are made of, mm-hmm. man. I'm telling you, we thought we were going to be done when their Anderson lines up to kick the field goal. It goes wide left. We got a chance to tie it. We go down, tie it, and then we go back and forth in overtime. And if you ever watch the replay again, when we lined up to kick the field goal, I'm the left. If you're looking at the TV, I'm the right wide, the right wing. But in the formation, I was the left wing in the formation for the field goal. So I was actually out there when we, you know, we, they called timeout trying to freeze us. And, you know, we're all in the huddle realizing if we get this kick through the goal post, we're going to the Super Bowl. I mean, everybody, don't don't jump off sides. Don't hold. Don't do this. <laughs> and I remember, you know, I had double duty because I had to get the guy trying to go through the, the first, um, the L at the end, but I had to get the screamer off the corner too. So I had double duty on that one. And all I remember is, you know, getting it was like everything stopped and went in slow motion, man. <laughs> Ball snapped. I got the inside guy, got the guy going around. Then I spun out just in case it got blocked. Or, and, man, that ball cleared the line of scrimmage. You can see that thing heading down the center track, and it was uh, my mom and dad who were back home in Jersey because my brother played in the league as well. He was in San Fran that year. We had to play them a third time to see who even went to play oh, Minnesota. Wow. So what happened was my mom and dad were tired from the travel because they went to <laughs> San Fran to watch him play Green, them play Green Bay. Then the following week they came to Atlanta to watch us both play. So my mom said, I'm tired. You guys yeah. go win in Minnesota, we come to the Super Bowl. But I remember she talks about when – the ball cleared the line and was going. To, I jumped like that old Toyota commercial. Yeah. And she said she almost hit herself in the ceiling fan back in Jersey doing the same thing. So it was like, you know, like I said, I was. And then getting to the big game was yeah. good, but we didn't finish it off. So, you know, I have less great memory. Yeah. But the experience was off the chart. Though. That, yeah, that game was incredible. Yeah. Mm. Anytime Great they memory. try to get you to do the dirty bird dance, did you did you get in, were you in part of that? You know what? I, I was a, I was I was always a background singer okay. in that one. <laughs> you know, we, we had the main guys, J- J- Jamal, Jamal Anderson, and yeah. uh, OJ Santiago. Yeah. They yeah. always argue who eventually <laughs> started too. And I was always that dude in the background, just getting a little. You know, <laughs> yeah. I was I was a pip. You know, yeah. last night had a pip. <laughs> I was a pip in the back. But yeah, I love that. <laughs> you with the Arizona Cardinals? Um, believe. Let me ask you this. With D Hop leaving, what was what was his impact on Kyler Mer- Kyler Murray and his growth? What what you what you think? That about was that? A, that was an interesting dynamic. Okay. Um, D Hop, as we know, as he's gotten later in his career, doesn't necessarily like to practice that much. Mm. You know, it's he interesting. likes to play on Sundays, but not necessarily practice mm-hmm. or during the week. And <laughs> it, it just and then Murray Kyler's got a personality where he didn't really like engulf the guys and. So it was like a little bit of a disconnect. Right. Mm-hmm. Kyler's doing his own thing. You know, yeah, Kingsbury, who's kind of an enabler in the whole system. It was a mess yeah. while Kingsbury's there. I think they have a chance with Gannon being there to okay. make some corrections. Right. We saw Murray had a pretty good second half coming back after the injury. Mm-hmm. But, like I said, he's a different cat, man. Yeah. I think because they have new leadership in there, he's got a chance, though, if they can yeah. just 
get him to be more quarterback in, mm-hmm. as I call it. You yeah. Know, being somebody who I'm relates, steal that. relates to more. Yeah. The, the whole locker room right. is not too inward. So we'll see how it goes. Is but that just like a personality thing with Kyler? Like It really is. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of those dudes that's succeeded cat. at every level yeah. and has never been challenged for one. And this is a level where even the best of the best have to work hard and do things that might yeah. be uncomfortable for him. And I think this is his first taste of being a little uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Everybody out there has just as much talent as him. Right. We see when he turns it on, though, how he's still a Special. differentiator. But it's, he can't just do it all the time. And there's some things he's going to have to work on in his game to get, you know, to kind of uplift himself. But like right. I said, personality-wise, he is just a different kind of dude. That, that's that. Uh, be comfortable with the uncomfortable thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hey, real quick. Interesting. Just to, to tie up the baseball part of you and the football part of you, how <laughs> how did you transition from one to the other? I was fortunate. I, after I finished my 95 season, I actually went over to the World League of American oh, okay. Football. Yeah. As it then turned into NFL Europe that was and a all fun that. League, man. And I was in Birmingham. I was in I was in Frankfurt, Germany. Yeah, the I galaxy. I went over there, the galaxy. Yeah. And I, that was the only way I would have been able. That was able to succeed. But I was able to, you know, I got over to camp late. It was a long story. Anybody who wants to know the story, I actually wrote it. It's in my book. If okay. uh, oh, Easy awesome. Does It, The Journey of a Lifetime. If you go to edsmithspeaks.com, okay. you can go to the book tab. But I tell the whole story about the whole journey. And man, I'm telling you, so many things had to work right. For, for a long time, it seemed like I was always in the wrong place for a long mm-hmm. time. And this was a stretch. When I made the switch, everything had to work like clockwork. If one thing would have been out of sync, I never, you never would have heard about me in the NFL. But for a stretch, everything did. I went over to the World League. Um, I was on, I made a great catch like in the first couple games, you know. And they, I was a novelty because they kept talking about this former baseball player who hasn't played in over a decade. Last time he played in high school was in high school. And he's our tight end, you know, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. And I made a quick name for myself. Um, actually, in the middle of the season, four games in, blew my MCL out. Oh. So I had to fly back to Birmingham and rehab for four weeks. And if I'd had surgery, I'd have been done for mm. like three months. But I decided not to have surgery. I rehabbed wow. it two days a week, seven days, a, two days, a, two times a day, seven days a week. I only I missed four weeks. By the time I got back over there, they made this big brace for me and everything. So I finished the season on a bad knee, um, you know, but everything worked out. By the yeah. time I got back here um, after the World Bowl, uh, I started getting calls. My agent was getting calls to get into the NFL, and I went right into my first That's training incredible. camp. I think it was 10 days from getting back to the States. I was in my first training camp in the NFL. That's incredible. So, <laughs> and I, and I, I played the rest of that year with the blown-out MCL, so. Nuts. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Did the people in Germany, like, love y'all? Like, were you rock stars walking oh, around? Man. We put 45. Because basketball is huge in, in Europe. We put 45,000 like, strong yeah. in our stadium <laughs> yeah. every every week, and they love the Frankfurt Galaxy. Yeah. They, I mean, we have parties. We have parades after the game. <laughs> we win or lose. They, we didn't, they didn't wait for the end of the season. Yeah. We had a party after every game, man. It was unbelievable. I love it. <laughs> That's great. That's man, good. I got to go get the book now. Yeah, yeah. I want to I hey, read it, too. Seriously. Hit that website again. Ed. Yeah, it's edsmithspeaks.com. And there's a book tab, and the title of the book is Easy Does It, The Journey of a Lifetime. And if you order it off the website, I actually sign every copy and send them out. So, they, you know, I've had people who've gotten them on Amazon and stuff like that. But if you order them from the site, I get the notification. I autograph them and send them out personally. Nice. So it's called the hey, man. Yeah. Pleasure meeting you, bro. Definitely. You too, man. I've been what a pleasure. blessing, man. What yeah. a great story, brother. You guys, I like said, you look like you're having fun. Yeah. Make sure you keep it up. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what we do. <laughs> Ed Smith, Believe in Cardinals podcast, and uh, check out the website, get the book, and uh, we'll be back with more 3HL 104.5 Design.